Pizza. Gentlemen, welcome to Future Perfect. Good evening, Tony. Good and evening, congratulations Tony. Uh, to the entire scientific community, especially uh, the people mm -hmm. behind the uh, uh, idea that led to the creation of Field Satamabaco, was it three years in, in the countdown? Well, uh, I guess that a substantial, well, it had its origins from uh, before then, mm -hmm. no, with the uh, initiatives of DOST and then Pichird, uh, also ver various advocates for this kind of legislation. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it probably you can trace it back a little bit earlier than that. Earlier? Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. Because, um, mm. of course, the um, the idea that we were going to have a space agency was initially, uh, I guess it sounded a little bit funny to Filipinos because <laughs> the, 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 always the idea of having a space agency would be to send a manned mission to space. But obviously what we started out doing was to uh, use uh, the sensors or the mm. remote sensing technology that we sent into space mm. to be able to send back scientific data so in that sense, that's yeah. how we started yeah. our exposure to space. You could actually yeah. say that in the last 10 years or even before that, most mm -hmm. of the uh, our involvement in uh, space-related uh, uh, fields yeah. are on uh, applications of uh, uh, use of satellite uh, source imagery yeah. right. for purposes of mapping, for purposes of uh, monitoring uh, various uh, environmental uh, conditions mm. for weather uh, monitoring yeah. and uh, those that had uh, those that uh, those actually had come to a uh, culminating point where in you, you know you really need to have this uh, uh, level of uh, proficiency not only in getting those satellite imagery but also in processing it so mm. uh, we said well why don't we do something about uh, having that capability to get these pictures uh, uh, not not just the pictures, but the satellites that carry the sensors sure. with them mm. in space. Because of course, there's a cost to acquiring mm. data through satellites. Because when we didn't have our own, we obviously had to pay for the services of other satellite uh, uh, carriers. No. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. Especially for uh, high resolution uh, imageries, mm. you know, the ones uh, you know one meter and below. Yeah. Uh, those are av only available uh, commercially. Mm. Also, the access to these images are quite, uh, it also comes at a st steep cost. Steep price. Mm. It's of the new law uh, that was passed to create the Philippine uh, Space Agency. So it's supposed to be headed by a, a rank of cabinet secretary, yeah. a director general. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, are there any qualifications for that director general? Qualifications, um, well, it requires that the director general have a graduate degree or advanced uh, and background on space technology, aerospace, uh, oh. sciences, and uh, engineering background. Yeah. So, yes, and at least five years of experience managing or, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, uh, such projects and portfolio. Mm -hmm. It also be like NASA because sometimes, you know, the people who run NASA aren't actually scientists themselves. Para mga bureaucrat lang. Tama ba? Or technocrats, yeah. Or technocrats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, because uh, a lot of the work has to deal with the, uh, the scientific enterprise yeah. side of it yeah. and dealing with, uh, well, conversing with scientists. Sure. So you have to be uh, in the same wavelength. I guess, the, uh, yeah. yeah. So mm. you would at least have to be conversant. Mm. Um, of course, there are many other dimensions of, of, of a space agency on the policy side. It's yeah. not just the technology. Mm. Yes, of yeah, course. So, they're, they're, so it, I guess those things uh, you you get to learn along the way or you know you have various people under you that can yeah. um, perform those functions for you yeah what different agencies are actually going to be working together with the field side is this going to be like a multi-agency organization uh, it is an uh, by itself an organization but it specifies that it should uh, it should be uh, more or less uh, uh, administered by a, uh, what we call a space uh, council national council a space this, council. The space council, okay. which is composed basically of the president as the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, you have two vice uh, chairmen, mm -hmm. uh, which is from? Uh, from the UST and from uh, Department of National Defense. Oh, defense. And 10 okay. other members. Uh, yeah. I think two are from the Houses of Congress, uh, mm -hmm. the chairman of the, S, uh, the Science and Technology uh, Committees okay. of the two houses. Yeah. And, the re and the others will be coming uh, from the different uh, agencies of government like uh, mm. na natural resources, environment, agriculture, mm. NEDA, yeah. DTI. But there are so many different groups now. Like you have Pichard, uh, I've got the OST-ASTI. Um, 
and the goal of FILSA is supposed to unify all of these programs, all of these different agencies. So uh, what's, go what's going to be the structure? I mean, how do you merge all of these different groups together? Well, I guess it's uh, to provide coherent direction. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, sustaining the gains so far achieved mm. by uh, the DOST in launching these space technology programs. So I expect that it will be, it would, there will be a transition mm -hmm. um, from, the, from the current efforts of DOST to the Philippine Space Agency. Yeah. Uh, ongoing projects right now that are funded by DOST should mm -hmm. may perhaps continue uh, okay. under the current implementing agencies. I yeah. think our secretary mentioned that earlier today mm -hmm. that if, um, for example, UP or ASTI is implementing a current project, uh, okay. building a certain satellite, then uh, carry on. FILSA no? will continue. Yeah. Uh, well, well, FILSA will be there you know, mm. for coordination, but I don't think it, that tr it would be so abrupt as for FILSA to immediately take over these things. But rather, sure. there's, a, there's a stage where there's a phase wherein you know, the FILSA will um, coordinate yeah, and yeah. then uh, eventually propose new programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what DOST can also support it. So you've got that's space happened. research and development, hazard management and climate studies, mm -hmm. national security and development, Space education and awareness. Uh, what are the other ones? Space industry capacity space and building, building yes. and international cooperation. cooperation now that's one interesting thing because we're part of a microsatellite consortium, consortium yes. uh, that, that was actually, um, I think, set up by the Japanese as well. They were actually yeah. the ones who, uh, the progenitor of the consortium. And being one, a member of the consortium, how will the FILSA help us uh, to better uh, improve our? Um, performance in that consortium? Uh, the, the way we were looking at it now is that uh, now with the establishment of the FILSA, you now have a rep sort of a permanent representative in all of the uh, space-related uh, meetings and uh, treaties that could possibly be formed. Now where are we going to put up the uh, FILSA? Are you going to have like a Cape Canaveral type of... Uh, <laughs> uh, because, you know, people are really thinking, wow, it feels like we have a first Philippine astronaut. Wow, well, a lot of people, I, I'm sure, no. on YouTube who want to be in space. Um, are we going to have a new facility for FILSA? Well, the law stipulates that there is a dedicated uh, area for mm. the establishment of FILSA. That would be in, well, Clark New City, uh, mm. New Clark City, sorry. New Clark uh, City. New Clark yeah. City. Of 10 billion that's going to be allocated for the space agency, it's going to be broken down into tranches of uh, 2 billion for uh, yes, in the course five of five years. Mm. Mm. Has the president given any inputs into what he believes should be the you know main objectives of the space agency? Well, uh, I have not heard uh, such inputs, but I you know this is something that I believe our, our secretary can weigh in uh, mm. during cabinet meetings, perhaps. Ah, but, uh, okay. mm. but what I know is that was the cabinet and the president reacted positively yeah. uh, to uh, Secretary De La Peña's uh, mention that the Philippines uh, needs a space agency and mm. we're one of only three countries in the region that Without still doesn't one. have one. Yeah. Yes. One thing that people are very curious about is that when you're in space, you're supposed to see the Philippines, right? Mm. Using these satellites. Why is it that the Department of National Defense is claiming that it never sees whether there are Chinese ships in our waters because they don't have the radar? Why are they talking radar when we already have satellites? satellites. Why is that? Well, uh, they, I, I, they don't see <laughs> our oceans? I mean, well, our I, I, Philippine I, I waters? I can't really speak for the Department of National Defense, yeah, yeah. but um, what I know is that they are always in our office. Uh, at least people from <laughs> from our mean? from our armed forces looking uh, at the satellite, looking at our, uh, our data. Oh. And so yes, this, this data is shared with mm. various government agencies, including uh, the defense establishment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we have access to various satellite sources, and one that is oh. coming soon is also a radar satellite. And the advantage of that is that this radar can penetrate uh, cloud cover. Whoa. So you can see uh, through the clouds and also uh, you can image at night. When you say coming soon, are we building this satellite? Uh, this is something that we are in partnership with uh, other countries uh, oh. to have um, a capacity on a certain imaging satellite, and radar it's not, satellite. And it's not part of the micro or nano satellite category. It's a bigger uh, satellite. Well, it's still relatively a smaller oh. satellite, but um, uh, probably uh, around 300 kilos or 400, uh, somewhere oh, okay. around that. So, we have more scholars who are taking up their masteral uh, degrees uh, in aerospace engineering. Uh, hmm. 
Well, not, not aerospace engineering. Not aerospace, no. It's actually, uh, when you're talking about local scholars in, yeah. in the Philippines. Right. We, what we have done is, uh, what we learned from the other countries, mm. we brought it home. And now we have established a program, mm. uh, well, embedded it in an existing program, because that's always the fastest way to go. Sure. So there's an existing program, it's a Master of Science and a Master of Engineering in Electrical Engineering yeah. in this UP. Is, this is called what? Well, it's a, a step up. Step up. Step right. up scholarships. Uh, the right. pro, uh, the program, the project is called Step Up. Yeah. It's um, really space technology um, mm. uh, proliferation through inter-university partnerships. Can this be the work, the makings of a space academy? <laughs> I guess uh, it's the seed the for. Seed, or yeah. Could be. Uh, what, what we're trying to do is we're doing it in the graduate program first, yeah, yeah. because currently it's still rather specialized knowledge. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you expect a certain prerequisite and background for the people entering this kind of field. Sure. Uh, but eventually it will trickle down to the undergraduate curriculum, and pretty soon these cubesats, these nano satellites, will be a high school project. <laughs> really, high school project? Ako dati no high school na ako mga popsicle sticks lang ina ginago ng bahay kubo. So you know, it's fancier you know, than more, that now, yes. It's yes. much fancier. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, uh, again, going back to the earlier misconception of Filipinos that we'll probably have a Filipino in space. Uh, will it be possible that someday the Philippine Space Agency will produce a qualified candidate who could join you know, uh, uh, you know, an orbital mission, maybe. Yeah. Well, I, I would not preclude that possibility. Mm. I mean, it's, it's. But it's not an objective. Well, currently now it's not a priority. Yeah. Um, but I cannot discount the impact of having a Filipino astronaut mm. in terms of oh, yeah. shopping him around in mm. the rural areas in the, our schools sure. and inspiring young children to yeah. go into space uh, yeah. science or science and technology. So that's a, he's a, going to be a, he or she will be a valuable ambassador for science and technology. Because I can imagine, you yeah. know, with our Philippine Space Agency, you'll be developing, of course, uh, future scientists, and many of them will say that the ultimate scientific laboratory is floating up there in the International Space Station. Yeah. Is is are we yeah. are we are we setting our sights on actually having somebody eventually from the Filsa go up to the ISS? Uh, at some point, well, at some point in time, um, probably every kid who has uh, made aware of uh, possibilities of space had dreamed actually of being an astronaut. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say that Malaysia, for example, they have one. We had just had actually the sent. Show. Yes. Mm -hmm. was, yeah. So it's also a possibility for us. I mentioned earlier that one of the key development areas is international space uh, cooperation. Cooperation. Yeah. So it's un it's through that key development area where it's possible for us to actually pursue. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me add to that, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, if, if and when we do that, mm -hmm. we're doing it for a meaningful reason. Of course. I guess it's, it's not, not just for uh, prestige or mm -hmm. anything, yeah. although it will go a long way. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, it would be meaningful for our Filipino astronaut to actually okay. conduct an experiment mm -hmm. born out of uh, Philippine technology that is now brought to space in a different environment to yes. test its condition there to mm. generate results in a different environment. So maybe we can test uh, locally produced uh, food that would sustain astronauts or space travel and right. then they would bring it to a place like the International Space Station. But or we'll see if dengue yeah. mosquitoes can survive in zero gravity <laughs> <laughs> that, that's and, a... and create a zero gravity mm -hmm. mosquito trap. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these exciting developments, of course, uh, you know, hopefully our kids and our grandkids mm -hmm. will someday see the Philippine Space Agency will be much bigger uh, and, and probably reach farther, you know, mm -hmm. not just on land, but also, of oh, course, uh, looking out into space uh, with Filipinos, you know, finally being able to join other nations that are sending mad missions, uh, especially now that they're thinking of going back to the moon. Well, right, right now, you mm -hmm. know, I That's guess uh, it's always that, that aspiration, right? But for now, it is really about information and data. Yeah, just right? data collection. <laughs> and uh, it, as a new oil of the information economy and the knowledge economy, we cannot be left behind. Well, I'm on space exploration for now. Well, uh, looking down towards Earth. Of course. Yeah. Initially.